Uh, okay, the floor is yours. So, would you like to start telling us a little bit about your ideation process? Uh, so, uh, we were thinking of which one should be uh, focused on, which problem is practically possible. And uh, we decided that uh, to check out interacting with animals, first of all, because there is no interaction happening, basically. Uh, with, you know, so it will be a human-animal uh, computer interaction. And the uh, response from the animals would be very low. So we decided not to include that one right now anyways. Um, and second was interaction with our installation. Uh, so that one, yes, we have kept it in the parking lot. And uh, third, uh, the difficulties in keeping hand in a VR position, that's what we decided on right now. And the fourth is the, uh, during disaster to lift heavy objects. Uh, so that's also like did not considered to be done. And we thought it might be a bit harder for us to do. Um, so, uh, finally, we decided on uh, difficulties in keeping hand in the weird position that was an exoskeleton. Uh, uh, and basically, for people like, uh, you know, for professionals like um, who work repeated jobs, like window washers, roof workers, painters, and all, all of them who would like to keep their hand in one position. Um, and the existing ones do not have an interaction element into it, which is what we are thinking, to add an interaction also to it. So I think we have shown that in the... Uh, I think it's on the right of this. Can you move this mirror board to a bit? Yeah. So the to the other side. You have to go to the yeah, right maybe. side to the new stickers, Adriana, on the on the right hand side. Yes. So um uh, if, if you like, you can tell me which uh, animal you are, so I can follow you. <laughs> which icon you are in the in the mural? If you are there, I can follow you. Oh, okay. it's, a, it's the right bear. Okay, it's all right. Huh? He is the bear. Okay. Am I? So. Locking the hand. Uh, so we we just you know uh, broken it down into one thing, which is locking the hand. I can we what? Uh, I'm so sorry. If I had to, I have to go for one second. If not, you know, one second. Sorry. Okay, maybe then, uh, Jogin, could you take over? Yeah, actually, what we actually planned is that so there are a lot of repeated works where you have to raise your hands and keep in a particular position, like uh, putting ceilings on the wall or or uh, in grocery stores you are picking from the top or so that kind of situations you need some sort of uh, additional support on your hands. So when you are raising your arm, so what we actually planned is that. So we can lock the arm in a particular position if we are using it for a long time. So there will be a locking mechanism on the hinge. So if a person wanted to keep at that position, when the arm raises it automatically, the pressure sensor will detect. So there is a, in, a desire to move the arm in the upward direction. So it will unlock the locking mechanism. And when it move up to a particular position, so it will lock on that position. So when an opposite force is exerted on it, so that we intentionally wanted to move them downwards, 
not because of the weight of the work we are doing. So then the arm will again disengage and follow the movement. So that's actually we planned. Great, thank you. And you are looking for an open source solution? Uh, so this is something when we searched on website uh, in Google, we found this one. So this is actually, uh, it's, it's not completely interactive. It, it, it's more like a spring attached to arm. So there will be mm -hmm. a fixed amount of support always due to the spring constant. And uh, we are actually planning to add a sensing mechanism on the arm so that it can log depending on the person's demand. So uh, in this scenario, if the load changes, there will be a um, intentional intrusion to change the spring concept by manually. But uh, I hope if we add a little bit of intelligence to the system, we can compensate that. So that's it. Okay, great. Uh, and just for our understanding, so you are at the moment in the ideation phase. So you have no prototype or something or uh, previous projects uh, on this topic. So I, I previously have done a locking mechanism to ah, okay. lock and uh, it's actually for a stair climbing uh, walker for assistive tech. So okay. I have developed a uh, hinge mechanism which can uh, rotate the orientation of the hinges on a walker so that it can climb up and down on stairs. So I have little experiences with that locking mechanism, I hope. Uh, but it is not much compact. So we need some iteration to reduce that to a compact maybe. So mm -hmm. I hope at least for the proof of concept, we can go for that, I, I hope. Okay, have you any pictures of this uh, locking mechanism? So basically it's actually a slotted wheel and the, there is actually a uh, electromagnetic actuator which insert a pin into the slots. So uh, we can adjust the electromagnetic actuator. And when we wanted to lock it, insert the pin into a particular slot of the wheel. So something like that. Okay. So I don't currently have a photo. Maybe I, it might take a couple of minutes to search on my repo and figure out. Yeah, yeah. I think we got the idea, great. though. But any, yeah. any, in any case, I think that it would be nice that we, if you can also put these pictures. So the idea is that uh, everyone can also, I mean, um, because no, remember maybe, that maybe we, I, we... I can, I, uh, I, I need some time, that's why. <laughs> So yeah. maybe I okay. can put it later after this conversation. Also. Okay. But but you have already access to the mural board. Is it right? Yeah, I have. Mm, yeah. Nandita, could you please carry on? Or meanwhile, I can check on my repo for the. Yeah. I, I mean, working it for uh, for a project that and uh, which which is already online, so you can prove it right. Sorry, I didn't get that. No, I was asking Georgian whether wasn't it for a project that that was all, already documented online? So ah, no, no, no. It, it is not documented. It's actually in my Fusion repository. Oh, okay. So, so actually, done it for uh, for a one of my friends. So I didn't document it. That, that's. Uh... A very very important part. So if you if you are based these uh, mechanisms, I mean based on on uh, existing research, it will be uh, yeah very very good if you can also at least uh, link uh, some images or, or part, for example, also describing this part of the mechanisms that you are using. So in a sense, uh, if you have already an structure, so you can also um, and remember as, as what I mentioned yesterday, so how, I mean, also, of course, uh, um, taking in account the problems that you are facing with the person who will 
uh, or the possibilities that you have uh, wearing it. Second, uh, uh, from a mechanical uh, perspective and also how you will resolve this in the, in the lab, uh, that would be also a, a very a very nice um, construction. Maybe I, I will also tell a little bit uh, later on. Uh, but I think that it's a very very interesting idea, and I think that that of course to picture more this um, uh, this ideation, I think that it, it it could be nice if you can uh, start to do like the sketches, or maybe even if you if you have like uh, the time to to understand two, 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 two parts, like understand better, like the process, how it will be really a part develop uh, for, for a person and describe more of this uh, problem. And the second part, um, of course, if you can uh, use uh, the tools that you have in the lab and uh, start to, to, to think about it uh, and prepare this for, for, the, for the presentation, for the challenge uh, and Thursday. Okay, uh, maybe it would be interesting for you when I show you uh, the things we we thought about in the other group because I think uh, we we are uh, working on a very similar problem and maybe it could be interesting to join the groups or maybe think together about the problem. Okay. So. Um, should I share my screen, Andrea? I think it's easier because we have a lot of information there. Sure. I think we have another guest now. Maybe Adriana, you can. Yes, so as introduce. you know, we, we, have, um, we have a local uh, node here in Pardos so that we have also a possibility to work uh, in the challenge. I invite uh, uh, Tasnin, who signed for the note from Qatar. Maybe if you are there, uh, Tasnin, you can introduce uh, yourself. And also tell a little bit about your, your background and your Fabric Academy project. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much, Adriana, for inviting uh, me. I'm uh, very actually excited about the, the challenge. Just uh, today I knew about it. I didn't know actually earlier, but it seems very exciting uh, to me um, to build uh, such assistive device uh, or assistive technology for uh, different uh, problems. It's very interesting, actually. I joined lately, actually, just like uh, five minutes ago, but it seems very interesting discussion, uh, the project that the students are working on. Um, from my experience with assistive technologies, I've worked uh, mainly on uh, during Fabric Academy and then afterwards, but my starting point was uh, during Fabric Academy to build um, some sort of uh, like biometric uh, de wearable device, uh, wearable technology. But I also I am also interested after that in into more about wearables and also uh, mainly assistive technologies for diabetic patients. Uh, I have a couple of projects uh, working on uh, on that, uh, and it seems very interesting for me. So yeah. And I yeah, have to you. say that uh, doesn't mean actually did uh, the project in in uh, for fabric academy the, her final project is in in the field of uh, sports for biometric uh, uh, analyze and i think that uh, and today were, were, was the graduation so yeah i yeah, it was just only like a very very good time and also she she got very very interested in the challenge and with the background in uh, mechanical engineer, maybe uh, doesn't want to join the group or maybe develop something. So, yeah, that's it. Okay, then I maybe report about what we did. So we worked together with uh, Pratamesh and Yogesh uh, from the Vigyan Ashram. It's a fab lab with a focus on agra topics. They are not here at the moment because we met earlier today uh, because it's very late in India. 
So um, there we 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 discussed uh, topics in uh, in the context of workspace, and um, yeah, at first we we talked about different problems, uh, pain in the back or in the arm because of overload. Um, and they showed us different uh, interactions at work. So farming topics where someone is uh, cutting veg vegetables on the floor or where someone is uh, carrying cement or someone is drilling uh, a hole on the roof so uh, or, or carrying a grass cutting machine uh, which is very heavy and what they already did they developed uh, an easy um, um, passive system for the support of the arm or the elbow to to make it easier to carry things and um, we wanted to yeah discuss further and deeper the, these problems and uh, what they want to develop is uh, because they already have a prototype for the arm they want to uh, develop a, a shoulder uh, support so that you can lift your whole arm not only the the, uh, the elbow and we discuss uh, different requirements to that you have to lift up about two and a half kilogram of force and uh, it's very important that the system is at the uh, maximum price of three hundred dollars so that it's affordable for uh, farmers or craftsmen in rural areas in, in India. So that is a basic idea. And uh, we have to use materials that are yeah, affordable. And uh, so it shouldn't be very uh, complex solution, which could be built by themselves. And uh, what we did today is we looked for uh, yeah, solutions from the industry, which are typically great, but very expensive. <laughs> and we looked at uh, some solutions from Otto Bock or here, Hunik, or um, I think we had a, another one, it's German Bionics, which have different types of axial skeletons. And we discussed different ideas how to pull up the shoulder uh, what they used in their prototype with for the arm was a very simple spring so which they built on their own and we discussed other ideas for the uh, shoulder because you need a, a, a bigger force for it and that's why we discussed also solutions like hydraulic cylinders or an artificial muscle system or some kind of uh, let's say pulling system where you have for instance a tube on your back and you pull up the the arms with some wires and um yeah we our idea was that we everybody in the team there were also today there were i think four or five people or even six from the fab lab uh, there and they joined today and they want to uh, make a little bit research on these four topics and we want to uh, yeah brainstorm and get some ideation on these topics looking for existing solutions in best case open source solutions which we can integrate in 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 our uh, uh, solution and uh, tomorrow we want to discuss them and yeah 
uh, want to have a look which parts of the solutions uh, are interesting for us, where are the limitations of the solutions and um, yeah, that's uh, what we want to do tomorrow, I think on 2 p.m. 30. And yeah, then we want to describe a first concept for a prototype, yeah. And what the, there was also a, a very specific problem they had, uh, or sp specific problems with the first prototype. So if you have any ideas or comments on that, would be also interesting. They had the problem of uh, this, the spring, how to simulate it or to calculate the, the right size of the, the spiral, spiral spring. And they just, uh, in the past, they only tried how, how big it has to be. And they would be interesting if someone has some kind of calculation or simulation tool for it. And the other problem was uh, the slipping of the, um, the system. I go to the left side so you understand what I mean. So here, in this case here, the, um, yeah, let's say the, the, the holding of the arm was, was not tight enough. So they had problems that the arm slips around in this, uh, in this tool. And yeah, they were looking for ideas. And I, I told them that maybe Paula has some ideas from the <laughs> prosthetic, uh, prosthetic design or something. Yeah. I think, yeah, that's everything. So, and uh, it, I, I think it might be interesting to join with the other team because to discuss a combination of the lock uh, of the locking system, or but we also can do it like a challenge uh, uh, in, in separated teams. So for me, it's totally open. Um, so, but anyways, you can also join the meeting tomorrow. We will uh, post it in the Slack channel. I think uh, the Zoom link and. Yeah, I would be interested if there are any questions. No questions. Was explained so very well. <laughs> I think that it's very interesting. I think that there are also some references for the uh, ATH Zurich because they have also a system of pulleys, uh, and um, and maybe that that would be a, a very nice combination. So I think that that the. Um, I think that it's, uh, as, as you mentioned, it would be very interesting to understand also with Paula, for example, because uh, with springs, you have to be careful that you don't uh, get other forces that maybe the spring will affect the, the joint of the, the, the arm or the, yeah, the articulation, let's say. So that's uh, one, of, one of the points. And, and that, for, for example, um, I, that reminds me the project of um, we have a project in, in a health camps with um, one person that didn't have a, a both uh, arms. So we wanted uh, the, the, the project, I, I now I totally for, forgot the name, but uh, it was a very interesting project because it, it was something in, in a similar way that, of course, here we are resolving an orthosis, but for, for her case, for example, she wanted to put a, a pant so and some hand, hands to go. So and and we after were thinking also in, in this design system of uh, uh, shoes. So uh, there are some shoes for for people with disabilities that you can just just press in the um, let's say a, a pulley that has a shoe. Then it will release the the shoe the the cordons of the shoe. So I think that that maybe that that would be that it's also a mechanism with uh, pulleys. 
So I think that maybe uh, in such an area, it, it would be a, a, a nice uh, combination. So that in, in a sense, we have to, to find the, the more, uh, first of all, the, the challenge of the, the forces that we want to achieve for the arm, but secondly, the, um, this, the smoothness in a sense that we will not affect the, any movement of the, of the body, let's say. And also if, if we need to involve other parts, for example, like kind of, if we have to, if we can focus just only in this part or if we need support from the other parts of the body in order to have a, a, a right posture. I think that, that, that it's also a, an important point, especially so that we don't have a, a more weight, let's say in one of the parts or maybe more movements so, of these things we have to think about it. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned the ETH, ETH Zurich. Uh, um, and I maybe, can yeah, if you have any links, but not only you, uh, any of you other guys have any links or projects related, or um, it would be also interesting to have also parts, so, so if you have uh, open source solutions for artificial muscles or open solution systems for a hydraulic cylinder or something like this, um, please mention it. Just leave a link here in the mural board, put it anywhere you like. Uh, maybe on the left-hand side is the most <laughs> space, but yeah, ah, I see. Now we have... Oh, it looks great. <laughs> it's a locking system, system of jogging, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I have, to be honest, I do not understand how it works. <laughs> <laughs> so this can you okay. again you explain it yeah so this is actually a walker system so mm -hmm. usually the patient uh, needed to uh, take the walker up and put it forward in order to move so instead of that this uh, system is actually using four wheels so that the patient can push it forward and there is a locking mechanism on the back wheels you can see on the figure and uh, when the patient take the hand away from the braking sensor it will automatically lock the back back wheel and we can firmly have a grip on the ground and move take the next step towards forward so what the hinge i was showing on the second image is that so suppose you wanted to climb a stair so you wanted to have the front wheels uh, uh, will be placed on the next stair so that it will be lifted up. So you can uh -huh. see some slots on the second image. So when we press a button, so the, uh, the front wheel will, can be easily rotated upward and we can lock on the particular position we wanted. So that's it. So the bottom one is the fabricated version. I used a laser cutted uh, stainless steel and few 3D printed parts for assembling it. And the uh, system is actually working. So, so uh, but it's actually a little bit bulkier. So that's the problem. <laughs> it's a prototype. Great work. Yeah, Looks very interesting. Thank you. I think now I have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I wanted to place these joints on the back side of the uh, at this point, I wanted to place those joints and I want to actuate it by an uh, uh, electrical mechanism or like a solenoid valve or a servo mechanism so that I can lock this on a position when a person uh, a trigger a pressure sensor or a muscle actuation trigger the uh, uh, procedure. So the sensor will, un the actuator will unlock the locking mechanism and let the person move hand freely and when we 
when the person at the desired location, it will automatically lock at that position. So that's it. So it's simple, but reduce a lot of effort on the muscles when we are using dead works on, on that. Uh, so that's I have a so question. Did you, did you, did you do this uh, part uh, in the fab lab, or did you, did you produce by yourself? Yeah, it's actually water jet cutted in our fab lab. Mm, I am just curious. But uh, which methods did you use? So for the, uh, yeah, for producing the whole mechanisms. I, I, I don't understand. So which methods, so techniques? I, I, I was just curious a little bit about the... Actually, yeah. those stainless steel portions are laser, uh, no, actually water is cutted. So, and the spacings are just 3 d printed. And also the slotted, slotted ring, which is also water jet cutted. So the slots are water jet cutted. And the PU rollers are actually directly bought from the uh, nearby show. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, um, yeah, I, I, I have um, a note. I mean, maybe if some of you have some questions from the audience. Yeah, I actually do have a question. Uh, so in this, uh, the prototype looks very good. The parts are super nice. And uh, I think you're, yes, not, you're very lucky that you have a water jet cutter. Um, <laughs> what I want to say is um, this is, let's say, one or zero, so either lock or unlock, um, which is very good, or maybe what's needed for this prototype. But in the in the in the other idea that you mentioned, the assistive device, uh, why is it you mentioned that you want to have adjustable, let's say, support? Why is this important? Um, this is my first question, and the second question is: Did you do any user testing with this uh, prototype? Uh which means the first one or the proposed prototype? No, the first one. The first one. The yeah, we actually done a couple of tests on the first one. And it's uh -huh. actually functional. I, I won't say it's perfect one, but it's actually functional. Yeah. It execute the, it, the brakes are working and the hinge mechanism uh -huh. is actually working. So to answer your okay. second question, uh, the purpose of the locking mechanism is supposed you wanted to hold a weight for a, for a couple of minutes in a particular height. Suppose you wanted to fix the ceiling and you want to hold the drill uh, in, in, a, in that position for, so suppose it's a heavyweight drilling machine, you wanted to put holes on the ceiling in order to put the fire pipes or AC or something like that. So you want to hold a very weight thing at that very same position for a couple of minutes. So uh, we, I am very specific about such situations. So it's not a general purpose kind of thing, but yeah. Also, if you yeah, this is very clear. Thank you for the explanation. But my question is, you mentioned that you want to sense something from the muscle. So you want to actuate the system based on some feedback. Uh, yeah. Where does this come in? For example. Okay, so the, the question is that, suppose it's a manual lock, every time when you're raising the, Hence, you have to manually uh, disengage the locking system with the other hand. So uh, I now I understand. Things. Okay. 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 But it's still zero or one. You don't provide, let's say, variable support. Yeah. So it's okay. actually a dynamic thing because it's we are sensing uh -huh. the movement. So the zero and so it's more like a, a bang bang controller kind of thing, not a PAD controller uh -huh. kind of thing. So it's okay. actually yeah, work. Yeah. yeah. So the gripping, or we need to mechanical clutches, which will complicate, I guess. It, it won't be completed in a fixed time domain. So I just, mm. it will be better, I, I guess, or we can. We can also use mechanical clutches in, in joints also, but yeah. 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 
Thank you, Ahmed, for the questions. Do you have more questions? So, uh, Nandita, you wanted to talk, so maybe do you want to add something? No, oh, no, no, no. He explained it, like I was about to explain, like why the variable movement is required. Okay, so then I have a question. And uh, so uh, in this, um, taking this, this steps that you think what do you think it will be the next steps for the next for tomorrow and especially for thursday to formulate your challenge and to present it so yeah maybe i can uh, a basic design kind of thing maybe so how the thing will be look like when we are assembling more like a cat basic cat model or kind of things that that could be possible uh, if we can add more yeah. from our team, then maybe we might be able to have a mini mini prototype or something like not with electronic cadet but without the cadet so It's provided we can have more in our team, like not just the two of us. <laughs> okay. Do you do you mean you, you need more support in the team? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the um, electronics things. If I concentrate on the mechanics, so uh, we should compromise on the electronics. So that's it. Uh, the time is a factor and the ground support also. So both are equally important. Yeah, maybe also uh, from our side. So do you think, uh, do we need to meet uh, tomorrow? Uh, um, that, that will be also very important in order to support you in the process? Okay, uh, I, I hope did, did maybe your... we can we can focus on the locking mechanism and uh, the engage and disengage mechanism with the solenoid actuator. And, and if that works, which means the system could be worked if the uh, sensing mechanism electronics also work. So that is the ch main challenge, uh, figuring out the locking mechanism, uh, which is, if it is worked properly. So maybe we can do, yeah. Uh, can we meet at the same time that we met today or a little bit earlier? And do we have to attend this, like the late night session? I mean, we are also from India, so it's the same time. So uh, if not, then I guess we can focus more on the other thing. You mean for for the conference? So I mean, yeah. I, I think we don't need uh, we don't need everyone in the in the late night session. Maybe we will also host the late night session for other people who, who didn't have the time to jo join the groups before. But we can do it like I did it today. So we explain some basic information and if someone is interested or have some project information he can put there and leave there so and you can uh, meet with uh, lean or the other team members earlier um would be fine for us of course yes that that, that is what i want it's your say. challenge <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we have also the Slack. I mean, tomorrow we don't have any um, uh, any schedule because actually it's free for you to develop the challenge as, as much as you as you want. Uh, so the idea is that that we will uh, keep communicating in Slack. And in case if you need any help, please uh, let us know. Uh, but of course, if if you want just a recap or maybe just to status uh, we we can uh, let's say uh, meet earlier uh, but otherwise feel free and and uh, for sure we will see us again on thursday for the for the presentation of the results 
but I think that we, we are here uh, from several backgrounds. So Lynn, uh, me, Ahmed, Tetar, and, and Nils. And if you think that, that you need like just the help, just let us know through the Slack chat. Yeah. Okay. Hey, maybe I, I, I don't know if um, someone want to add something or maybe Tasnin, do, did, did you get an idea of the challenge? Maybe if, if you want to join one or maybe um, so otherwise, yeah. Actually, or, or I love the, the second one. Uh, it's so interesting, uh, especially the idea of artificial muscle. So I'm thinking about SMAs, maybe I need to do some research about that because uh, SMAs are very interesting to work as artificial muscles. They use them amazingly in surgical robots, even in some other. So it can be a nice inter integration, but I'm not sure to what extent it can work. Maybe it needs some research. Yeah, we were also curious, is it really possible with the with small money to to use artificial muscle and also with less weight and uh, easy materials to get high forces uh, you need yeah. so if you have any information papers or interesting projects you know let us know or just join us or leave us a message in, in slack Sure, I will look I will look for something regarding that. Do you right. already have access to Slack or the Adriana, did you add her to Slack? Did we lose Adriana? Maybe you just uh, put the uh, Slack channel in the in the chat link. That would um, be great for uh, all. one second. I need to figure out how to do that. Hi. Hi. I Hi. hope you it didn't cut the communication. So I think that we have another another uh, visitor here, Daniel. Maybe you can introduce yourself, and maybe if you have the chance to to tell uh, us if you have some. Uh, interest in one of the ideas that uh, the two groups present today. Uh, Daniel? Um, uh, it would be great, of course, Daniel, if you can share with us the project uh, with uh, uh, cerebral paralysis, as uh, we present yesterday uh, in the in the challenge that we have, a, or I have a, a similar situation with a patient who had a paralysis in the middle part of the of body. It would be great if, if you can present. or otherwise to join the, the Slack channel. And, and I will suggest that maybe, uh, Nils, if you want to post the session tomorrow when you will meet with the other team, so maybe we can also join join you. <laughs> okay, yeah, I will place it tomorrow uh, in the Slack uh, channel. The, it will be a Zoom link and it will be on uh, 2.30, I think, Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, 2.30 uh, two, uh, uh, p.m. Uh, Central European summertime. <laughs> and I just posted the Slack link on the, um, on the chat. So if whoever is not on Slack and would like to join us, please click on that link and just um, enter the channel. This is how we will be communicating. Okay. 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 Otherwise, uh, yeah, we the 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 final results will be presented on Thursday. Uh, 
equals a two. I, I was suddenly. Um, uh, so it would be it would be interesting if in any case you participate also to see the results. Uh, at uh, one thirty p.m. Um, Central European time, and uh, also we have a session evening about the pub care. So uh, especially for Daniel, if you want to also share with us your project, I think that that would be also another session that you can share with us this this project. Um, so uh, yeah, I for sure invite you to to participate in in both in in a sense that uh, you can also uh, that the challenge is not only if you if you start let's say uh, later oh okay so then with this uh, session i think that if there are more questions suggestions um wishes uh, I thank you all, also the mentors, uh, in really, really amazing uh, work. And uh, we will also see with, with what ideas uh, are coming and we, we will, uh, yeah, stay connected uh, through the uh, Slack channel. And I hope see you latest uh, on Thursday. Thank you. And have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. And guys, if you need help with electronics, just uh, feel free to contact me on, on Slack, yeah? You mentioned you need some help with electronics, yeah? Cool. Great, Ahmed. OK. Ciao, everyone. Cheers. Bye. 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 Cheers. Bye.